Salah, sons of Reuben, took men, and they rose up before Moses with some of the children of Israel, uh, 250 leaders of the congregation, representatives of the congregation, and men of renown. In other words, they weren't, you know, just the, the, the laymen, they were leaders. They gathered together against Moses and Aaron and said to them, Now listen closely, you take too much upon yourselves, for all of the congregation is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Why then do you exalt yourselves above the congregation of the Lord? <clears throat> now, this is a lack of respect thing. God has designed the church to function where we are all subject to one another. Leaders and, I, I hate to say non-leaders because everybody's leaders, but you know what I'm talking about. Let, let me phrase it this way. He has made the fivefold ministry subject to those that are in the 95%, the marketplace apostles and ministers, and he's made the marketplace apostles and ministers subject to the 5%. So we're both subject to one another. Our function, how we function in the church is a little bit different. And so the 5% function is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. The, the people that are in the 5% that are the true apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher are not there to exalt themselves. They are there to provide the equipping. They didn't ask to be there. According to Ephesians 4, God, Jesus, appoints gifts to men. And these gifts are to be used as servanthood to the 95%. Okay, because you, you guys have heard me. To me, the 95% are even probably more important than the five because of where everybody's at. Okay, so this would be like, and this is how the spirit works of jealousy in a church. It begins to say, you're just as important. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're just as important. They, they're taking too much upon themselves. We're all holy. Where did, why are they in charge? See, that, that's how it works. Why are they the... Remember the other day they didn't handle that right? Or remember the other day they did this? And we think that's wrong. And so now you got the leaven of Herod going through a congregation and creating factions. Okay? So now it's us against you. That, that's how that works. So it's flattery. Now, I personally believe that if you have a strong um, uh, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, where they empower the people, they will feel important. And, and so the enemy can't worm their way in. You know what I mean? So if, the, if a person is acting as a true office minister, then they won't be making others feel little or below them. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I think that can protect you against that. But either way, this is what's going on here. Well, so, I think it's interesting because we know that they refuse to go and have Don't be preaching communion. my message. Yeah, communion. Because they, it was like, you do it. You do it. We don't want to see the face of God. Right. They were afraid. Right. And so, but then here they want to be in charge. And you're even. exactly right because the reason, well, I don't want to get ahead of myself. <laughs> so <laughs> hang on because there's a lot of prophetic and teaching anointing here this morning. So mm -hmm. Korah was jealous and he wanted Moses' position. Mm -hmm. See, that's the thing. The, the 250 think that Korah was for them. No, 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 no. Korah was for Korah. Mm -hmm. He wanted to replace Moses. And uh, so he was of the tribe of Levi. He uh, had recruited men from the tribe of Reuben to incite rebellion. And then he says, uh, we are all set apart by the Lord. He is with all of us. Right, what right do you have to act as though you are greater than us? So this is one of the best examples of envy and self, selfish ambition. Now listen to the New Living Translation. Uh, this is Moses' response. And I, I'm not sure what verse it is. It might be... Um, Verse 5. But anyway, no, it's verse 8. Yeah, verse 8. You've got a 9 here. Then Moses spoke again to Korah. Now listen, you Levites. Does it seem insignificant to you that the God of Israel has chosen you from among all the community of Israel to be near him so you can serve in the Lord's tabernacle and stand before the people to minister to them? 
Korah, he has already given this special ministry to you and your fellow Levites. Are you now demanding the priesthood as well? They're je jealous of Aaron as well. The Lord is the one you and your follow followers are really revolting against. For who is Aaron that you are complaining about him? In other words, he didn't ask for it. This God is the one that put him in place. See, that's why we don't vote uh, people in. You are either called and sent out or not. You know what I mean? So uh, that, that's why our bylaws don't have this voting nonsense in there. So then Moses summoned Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, but they replied, we, re we refuse to come before you. Isn't it enough that you brought us out of Egypt, a land flowing with milk and honey, to kill what? us here in this wilderness? Okay. And, and, right. And now you treat us like your subjects. What's more, you haven't brought us into the land flowing with milk and honey. You haven't given us a new homeland with fields and vineyards. Are you trying to fool these men? We won't come. Okay. Wow. This right here. Let's recap. Let's let's revisit. This Moses sent the 12 spies into Canaan. Mm -hmm. Hi. 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 Uh, Passing up these flyers for a family talk event that's going on at the high school. Okay, can you just leave it? We're right in the middle of a church service. And it's live. <laughs> it's okay. You're fine. You can stay if you want, but all right. And uh, and so he sends out the twelve spies. Ten of them wanted to kill the two, and so then the Lord he's had it. He's had it up to here, and he's like, okay, here's what's going to happen. All of this generation, you're going to die in this wilderness. It wasn't Moses' fault. Mm -hmm. So now, again, it is deception. They're blaming Moses mm -hmm. for the fact that they're stuck in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Wolves do that. You can talk to a wolf mm -hmm. until that wolf is blue in its fur. <laughs> okay? And they, and they will always blame you. They will always blame other people. You can never convince them or make them see, actually, the reason your life sucks right now is because of you, not me. Okay? So that, that is amazing to me. But again, we can't get prideful. We must consider ourselves lest we too fall. See, that's the thing. There should be a fear of the Lord, which is a dependence upon Him, that you stay free because everybody's subject to deception. But you don't want to fear the deception because you will actually begin to be, be deceived. Whatever you fear, you worship. Okay, I, I can just imagine Moses. I bet he was like, what? That was weird. Did you hear that, G? No. <laughs> okay. I need hearing me. That's right. Okay, so here it is. Meanwhile, in the New Living, Korah had stirred up the entire community. Now it spread like cancer against Moses and Aaron, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. <laughs> Richard, are you tired? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, against the entire community, and they all gathered at the tabernacle entrance. Then the glorious presence of the Lord appeared to the whole community. And the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Get away from all these people so that I may instantly destroy them. So now an entire generation, entire people, they were going to be wiped out. But Moses and Aaron fell face down on the ground. Oh God, they pleaded, You are the God who gives breath to all creatures. Must you be angry with all the people when only one man sins? So they're a true leader. They will always intercede. And so they're reminding God of who he is. And I think, it, I, <laughs> I, think, and I think we have to examine ourselves because I probably would have been on I'd there. I'd be like, kill yeah. them all! Yes, kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> Burn them all! You know, like, that's how I would have been too. <laughs> that's why we Send don't have... them anyway, you know? <laughs> At least give them a, a sunburn. Yeah. See, that's why we're not over, over a million people, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So then... So, here's what the Lord said. Tell all the people to get away from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. So Moses got up. <laughs> he rushed to all the tents, uh, followed by the elders of Israel, and said, Quick, get away from the tents of these wicked men, and don't touch anything that belongs to them. Why? Because it was defiled. If you do, you will be destroyed for their sins. 
So all the people stood back from the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abram. Then Dathan and Abram came out and stood at the entrance of their tents together with their wives and children and little ones. And this is sad. Mm -hmm. Moses says, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things I have done, for I have not done them on my own. If these men die a natural death, or if nothing unusual happens, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord does something entirely new, and the ground opens its mouth and swallows them and all their belongings, and they go down alive into the grave, then you will know that these men have shown contempt for the Lord. Now let me pause. This is a case where I'm sure Moses' heart was being ripped out of his chest because he knew these little kids were about to die. Okay? But he could not take that into consideration because those kids would have grown up bitter. You, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so he had to release the judgment of the Lord, but also the word contempt. Remember, contempt is a hidden hostility. I will not do business with a person who shows contempt because you can never change their mind. A guy that stayed marriages for over 20 plus years says he can tell by pictures and how a couple interacts within five minutes if they'll divorce because the other one always has contempt on their face. And once there's contempt, it's done. Isn't that interesting? So they showed contempt to the Lord. Verse 31, he had hardly finished speaking the words. When the ground suddenly split open uh, beneath them, the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the men along with their households and all their followers who were standing with them and everything they owned. So they went down alive into the grave along with all of their belongings. The earth closed over them and they all vanished up from among the people of Israel. All the people around them fled when they heard their screams. The earth will swallow us too, they cried. Then fire blazed forth from the Lord and burned up the 250 men who were offering incense. Okay, why were they offering incense? So basically this was a coup. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I don't want to get into Wolf's judgment uh, too much. We'll get into that later. But it reveals the fact that the true rebellion wasn't against Moses. It was against the Lord. It's also important to note that Korah and his faction thought they were more spiritual than Moses. This elitism can definitely be a sign, but not always. Sometimes it's just immaturity. Now, this is important, guys. Um, well, the incense, to me, it tells me that they first were trying to take over the, 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 worship. the worship and the... the um, Priest, uh, the, priesthood. the priesthood, absolutely. They were already trying to take that over. The good news is God will have your back. See, yeah. he, he shows over and over and over, he'll have your back. With that comes the responsibility to pray for those coming against you. See, that, that's why that's important. Mm -hmm. A true leader will pray, against, uh, pray for those coming against them because they know you know, even in the New Testament, see people that, well, that's Old Testament. Yes, it is. But you got uh, 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 all the people that, Ananias and Sapphira, mm -hmm. they were lying to the Holy Spirit. If you look at the story, they were lying to the apostles. But the reality was, no, they were actually lying to Holy Spirit. So that's why sometimes when the Lord said, he said, he breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. This is in John. Receive the Holy Spirit. <coughs> then he said, whatever sins you retain, they will be retained. Whatever sins you remit, they will be remitted. That's what he was talking about. The apostolic authority is, no judgment will be dispensed here. Or, no, we will remit these sins and allow that person back into the congregation. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's why you have to have a heart where Holy Spirit's telling you they're not going to repent, get them out. Or they will repent, keep them in. They're going to repent, but it's not your assignment. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's, you got to hear Holy Ghost. Oh, wow. And so, be careful. For those of you, Roberta, Diane, Richard, all of you that y'all have more compassion than me, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Kathy, you got to be careful with yeah. that because that will sometimes blind you to what's needed. And then we will 
feed off of your compassionate nature and not say, burn them all, Lord. You know I mean? <laughs> That's why we need one another. Well, I think all we got to do is look at this as uh, impeachment of Moses. <laughs> we bring it right into today, won't we? <laughs> Yeah. It is. Who do you think you are? It is. it is. We're all. That's why they're mad at him because he was not an elite politician like them, hmm? and he's doing a better exactly. job than any of them have done. And we'll tell you. And we're telling you how yeah, to. We'll tell you how to do it. Yeah. Yeah. You're very right. Okay. <laughs> so now we're um, going to finish up with Jude uh, uh, verse twelve. These false teachers are like hidden reefs at your love feast. Now, you know, love feasts were not orgies, okay? <laughs> love feasts, because they actually said that. Romans said they were having orgies and eating kids. Mm -hmm. um, love feasts are their uh, church gatherings where they'd have communion and, you know, hang out with one another and worship and all that, like we're doing here. Lying in wait to shipwreck the immature. They feast among you without reverence, having no shepherd but themselves. They are clouds with no rain, swept along by the winds like fruitless late autumn trees, twice dead, barren, and plucked up by the roots. They are wild waves of the sea, flinging out the foam of their shame and disgrace. They are misleading like wandering stars for whom the complete darkness of eternal doom or gloom has been reserved. Okay, now this is you are not a once saved, always saved type situation, okay? So, um, by the language. Okay, so love feasts were uh, church gatherings of worship, teaching, prophesying, having communion together, and fellowshipping. But these were waiting to shipwreck the immature. Uh, in the Aramaic, they had no reverence at all, meaning they would not submit their souls to anybody. They're going to do what they wanted to do, and they didn't care. So, clouds without rain is a lack of revelatory teaching. Okay, so we talked about that earlier. They didn't have any word in them. Swept along by the winds. Winds is spirits in both the Hebrew and the Aramaic, revealing that they were swept along by demonic spirits. Fruitless late autumn trees, twice dead, implies that they were once born again, <coughs> and they are no longer. Um, also, it can be uh, an implication of like autumn trees are really pretty. So they have a pretty outside, but they're very evil on the inside. Wild waves flinging out foam means they're very chaotic and unpredictable. They're confused and they make others confused. That's a sign. It's never restful around them. They're very restless. And in the midst of all the chaos, you see their shame and disgrace. Misleading like wandering stars. Back then and today, when needed, stars are navigational tools. But these could be depended on. They would mislead and they would deceive. They would give disastrous guidance and counsel. And finally, their end will be complete darkness of eternal gloom as far away from God as possible. That's what that means. Okay, verse 16. These people are always complaining and never satisfied, finding fault with everyone. They follow their own evil desires and their mouths cannot uh, speak scandalous things. They enjoy using seductive flattery to ma manipulate others. Okay, the word grumblers <laughs> is interesting. It only occurs here and then in Proverbs 26, 22. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go down into the inmost being. The word talebearer is the same word as grumbler. Hmm. So they're gossips. I thought it would be like lies. Mm -mm, it's thinking. gossip. Okay. So... Uh, it's used to describe false teachers as men who are dissatisfied with their lot and therefore with God. Though not giving to God what they own Him as such. Wolves are offended with God. They blame Him. They are offended with Him whatever way. Uh, they think that He's withholding good from uh, them, that He won't fix you know, uh, their problems, etc., etc. They don't understand actually they're the problem. Also, what's interesting is that the one place this word is used in the Old Testament is used to referring to a talebearer or gossip. Gossip goes hand in hand with a wolf. They speak evil of what they don't know, including people. And then the word complainers here literally means they are constantly blaming others. They try to get in with those they want something from, and um, that's also a characteristic too. Now, 
uh, verses 18 through 19, um, they taught you, in the last days there will always be mockers motivated by their own ungodly desires. These people cause divisions. Are you starting to see a pattern? Complaining, grumbling, sexual immorality, rebellion, um, uh, um, causing divisions. They cause division in, in our followers of their own natural instincts, devoid of the life of the Spirit. Okay, so uh, the word mockers. How I told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. Now the word cause divisions, twice dead, they don't have the Holy Spirit. It can mean one of two things. Number one, they've not yet lost their salvation, but they're not living by the Spirit. Or they have lost their salvation and they no longer have them. So the, it can go either way there. Okay? And uh, the word sensual means soulish and worldly. Very worldly. Uh, they are driven by their own will, their own mindsets and emotions, and they refuse to submit their souls to the Holy Spirit or one another. They love the supernatural, but only to put on a show and seem spiritual. But using the power of God for re real transformation and producing fruit, they could care less. All right, so any questions or any uh, other feedback? I cannot believe, did I not set my guess I got done early. Oh, I've got five minutes. <laughs> Even with all our extras. I'm so proud of myself right now. But again, I, I bet you guys can think of people, huh? Oh, yeah. What? I was trying to think of somebody. You've never met a... a a person like that? Or would it be more toward the legalistic aspect, probably? Uh, I can't remember. If yeah, yeah, I have. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I have met probably more the hyper-spiritual mm -hmm. people than the legalistic. In the legalistic, I sure can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're always trying to, yep, take control. Nobody's doing it right. Well, even if you look that. at the Pharisees... Um, the, there were implications in the Lord's words that they were uh, sexually immoral, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, that's why whenever they brought the lady, you know, that they caught in adultery, where's the guy? This is my first question. Mm -hmm. But, um, and he's like, he who's without sin cast first stone. A lot of those people, it is a guarantee. And the reason it's a guarantee is because Romans says it is, that the very thing someone's blaming you for, they're doing. Oh, I bet yeah. they. I bet yeah. they had their own sex sludge fund. <laughs> sludge fund. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so yeah. It, it is, and and that's why it, on the news, but also in your personal life, if you have people attacking you for doing something that you're not doing, <coughs> it is a guarantee that they are either thinking about those things and doing them, or they're already doing them. Mm -hmm. Because we always have that tendency to want to deflect off of ourselves onto other people. Mm -hmm. yep. So, all right, well. Yeah, if your spouse is accusing you of cheating, <laughs> probably a good chance that they may be doing it. Hire an investigator. Yep. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay, well, um, Kathy, would you pray over the tithes and offerings? I will. Dear yeah, Father, we come to you today. Now, we thank you for the insights you've given us. We ask that we be able to apply this for our lives and think about it, reflect on it. We want to show our gratitude towards you through our tithes, through our offerings, that we know that that's what we have to give to you. We have love, we have worship, and we want to respect you by giving tithes and, and our offerings to you. Jesus. We thank you. And we just ask that you be with us today and in the coming week. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs>